So NumPy stands physically for your numerical Python. Like in the SIMPy you have learned for symbolic computations and all. In the NumPy it stands for numerical Python, which is a library which consists of some multi-dimensionals arrays, okay, and uh, some objects and collections of some processings of mathematical and log logical operations <coughs> on arrays which can be performed, right? So basically, you go with the numerical analysis. You can say on with <coughs> on with not sorry on arrays, basically, right? So a lot of functions are there. Lot means a lot of functions are there for the NumPy. It's like, and the higher version of NumPy, if you go with that, it's called as SciPy. Okay. Simply, you have learned, you have given test to write, so I hope them would be very much clear to you. And next, we are going to learn this NumPy two days, and then we'll be going with pandas. Okay, so <clears throat> sorry. let's start up. The very first thing, as I say, uh, so if I write up here, like NumPy would be an n dimensional. Okay. Now, till now you have been learning like like. Uh, if we want to see some documentation of anything, we write help of something like that, right? Or if we want some of the uh, documentations in the NumPy, we write for np.info. Okay, so we will go with that too. Uh, sure, some data science students are waiting. Now let me make them join here. Have it all. Okay. So, like the very first thing, if we want to make some of the arrays, so what we are doing in, the, in that case is would be like a one. I'm making an array here in the in the numpy. It would be np dot and array. Sorry, first we need to import the package of numpy as the np. You can make it in your suitable variables. <coughs> okay, and. We will be checking the versions we are using of the numpy so that would be np dot underscore underscore of the versions and these are quite much very much faster than the lists what we have written okay as compared to lists, these are very much very very important and useful like if i repeat some very basic things of a list the one function if i go through if i say this is a list of numbers <coughs> and range i want to give as uh, 5000 numbers right so it is a blank list and i say for i in a range of uh, some 5000 uh, num dot append the i okay that's it num dot append the i so this is a case of a list that has been done <clears throat> now here in the num could you find all the list of 5000 numbers right that is very simple thing right now what is the size of this total thing which is being stored right so we need to go with the sys dot get size of this and then uh, give the take the values basically from there right so it will be writing as import sys2 and sys dot get the size of so this is g missing get size of this num say is 43048 bytes okay now if you want with the comparison to a numpy array so in the numpy array also we will be taking it in the same way but going with the numpy arrays let me discuss you first some of the basic informations like size item size numeric things and all the very basic things first of all because comparisons you need to understand some of the basics then we'll be going in the hard versions okay so in numpy if we need to create an array a1 it would be np dot an array simple 
and inside this a1 array just a second yeah so here you can make some square brackets you can make some double brackets too so i'll be making it there as the square brackets loose brackets okay and i'll be writing some of the numerics numbers so, right so let's say i write uh, one i write two three four five and six right so <clears throat> the difference between your list and your numpy is like in the list you can hold some heterogeneous types of data right in the numpy array you are going to deal with the homogeneity of the data right that is homogeneous data would be there because if you write a uh, integer integers would be there float then complete floats would have to be given uh, complex complex strings and uh, no, not the strings you can send objects over there okay all right so this is kind of how we are going to make an array okay now why do we say as n dimensional arrays when the, we have discussed right right now so a1 this is an array which is having one two and this is a numpy array if you go with the go with the data type so type of a1 gives you numpy dot nd array n dimensions array now how many dimensions array nd means an n dimensional array so how many dimensions of array this is right so for checking the number of dimensions we keep in mind this these are very important things for uh, dimension checking i can write on there so for dimension checking we need to go with the uh, <coughs> function call is n dim n dim this will be giving you the dimensions mm, yeah n dim okay <coughs> so a1 dot n dim it gives you one that means one dimension clear right a1 gives you one dimension that means it is one dimensional array so why it is one dimensional array? So the best way to recognize any kind of an array is the square brackets or the tuple brackets what is there inside one of the parentheses right so inside here we can find one bracket starting from here from this one this end right and it goes till here So one list bracket you can find on there, which we can define as one list bracket, right? One list bracket we can say it from one to six we are having. <laughs> okay. Now, so what if do if we increase the size of this? If we increase some a two, if we make now two different brackets, can you say? one two three four again a bracket five six seven and eight right so a2 is again an array now which is having two different list brackets you can find so don't think it is three different list brackets right because <coughs> this is a complete list bracket right inside that you have one list bracket and another list bracket that is two different list brackets, right? So completely, how do we define is like in an array, the starting number of list brackets or the tuple brackets and the ending number of tuple brackets or the list brackets, right? Both the things. So starting we could see as two and ending we could see as two. Don't count the middle ones, okay? Starting two and the ending two. So completely the number of dimensions would be two. So a2 dot ndim would be giving you two dimensions, right? I hope it is clear. Okay. Now with the dimensions, as the number of dimension increases, there is a term in the arrays which is called as rows and columns, which comes in the matrix level. Okay. So that comes where in the rows and columns and the shapes increases. So what is this shape now? So A2 has got some shape and we'll be writing it as this A2 dot shape. So it says 
2 cross 4 which means this A2 is having 2 rows and 4 columns or you can say 2 rows with 4 elements each clear to everyone right 1 2 3 4 is the first row 5 6 7 it is the next row second row and then 1 5 2 6 3 7 and 4 it is the 4 <coughs> columns so 2 rows and 4 columns that is your shape of this array <coughs> now the shape can be changed or you can say this is 8 right 2 cross 4 that is 8 so it can be 4 cross 2 it can be 1 cross 8 it can be 8 cross 1 right if we apply some matrix rules the very basic things what we have read 11 12 hmm? okay so this is your shape right now consider like if it is a list if it is a list converting is very easy <coughs> This is your list, an array to a list, that is dot to list, parenthesis, converted to a list, right? But this list is having two different list brackets, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? So if you count number of indexings in the list, you will be getting only 2, 0 and 1. <coughs> so like if I say L1. seems something like this so l1 of 0 and l1 of 1 two different things are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 <coughs> now this time we are getting in the tuples above one even is in the list okay fine now so to find the complete list of the uh, your l1 what you'll do is this so you find it to be 2 right but you need to go through the interiors too right because there are, there are four and four eight elements but those are being kept inside ls so you consider as two elements but this not happens with the case of an array so a2 has got also eight elements so how do you find there so we say a2 dot size so size represents you the complete the length of your array you should be taking care of the things right size gives you the complete length of your array okay shape gives you the rows and the columns values okay now these elements must have some data types now what is the data type of a2 right the elements what are there in the a2 <coughs> sorry the elements what are there in the a2 has got some data types now what are those data types we want to go through that right we just write the data type of this a2 this is something wrong right so we need to write np dot d type of a2 again something wrong okay fine so a2 dot d type np type a2 oh what is that so a2 dot d type hmm fine that was wrong okay so it is integer of 64 bits right okay 64 bits are there <coughs> or you can find np dot d type of this a2 two things are there you can go with any of them right now integer of 64 so you need to understand the things right like in the size if we are talking about the size is 8 that means the complete elements what we have seen there is the number of elements what we find is to be 8. Now if we want to talk about the data types, the data types are giving you the integer of 64 bits, right. So individual size of the elements we need to find here so that we can find the complete size of things, right, okay. So item size is there called as something right item size item size is called as individual size of one particular element right if i say your l1 uh, in the previous very uh, first class in the second class i said you that what is the size of an integer if anyone remember <coughs> yeah 
memory locations not not according to that integer has got 28 bytes float always 24 complex 32 these strings have got different size right because according, according to your strings and uh, the numbers increases and it goes according right so if let's say if the size of an element if i say this mark zeros is even 32 integer it is i'm talking about the data types so even if the size of this element is 32 bits there yeah, let me go with something like this 32 bits okay so oh, just a minute what is it Uh, let me define x equals to twelve, <coughs> y forty-five point six, and set as forty-four j. Hmm. So says dot <coughs> get size of this x. Sorry, wait. It should be. Hmm. There's some more problems. Now, if in a list I say. There are some five different type of numbers. So five numbers have got different different uh, data types. Might be if I say it is same, all the integers are there. <coughs> so twenty eight multiplied by five, one is having twenty eight. Five would be having twelve multiplied by five. Sorry, twenty eight multiplied by five. One is there with twenty five twenty eight bytes. Five would be there with the one forty. Right. In the same thing, if I make an array, or if I have an array where I have some six numbers, not five, six numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six. So if it is a list, I'll be taking it as twenty-eight multiplied by six. Now, if this is an array, what I said, item size works here. Individual element have got some item size. Now, item size would be defined on the basis of their data types. So, data type of a one is a one dot d type, and it is of sixty four bits. Or you can say a one dot d type dot name of your data type that is integer of sixty four bits. Okay, that is fine. Now, so integer of sixty four bits. If we need to go with the item size, remember this: that your item size is always equals to your data type. Sorry, data type divided by the it. Always. This will be the item size of any array. So, if I say it is of integer of sixty-four bits, then every individual element is going to have an In, uh, item size of eight bits. So if I say a one dot item size eight, very clear. If I make a three an array, where I'm saying one, two, three, four, five, and here. I would also be defining that the data type is going to be np dot integer of sixteen bits. Defined a three sixteen bits integer. Okay. Now a three dot item size would be how much? Sixteen by eight two. Clear. That is how it is being defined. 
item size divided by 8. <coughs> so it can be 8, it can be 16, 32, 64, right? Complex has got different types. So uh, in the first day, I think I have shared you some books where you can go with the things <coughs> just written up there. Okay. All right. <coughs> so A3 has got this, right? Now A3 has elements 5. Now A3 dot the item size, one element size is 2 multiplied by the complete element that is size gives you the complete length. So it gives you 10. Whereas in the same case, if I have a list of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I write here with the size of function, I get oh, spinning error 80, 8 times greater, right? So, num p can store the same things as in your uh, list, right? Or in, in some normal arrays with very less spaces and in very less times. So these are the things. Now let's talk about the shapes we have understood of A2. Let me go again. A2 has got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Now, let's say if it is having a shape of 2 cross 4, then it can, of the matrix law, we can say that it can also be converted in 4 cross 2. So that can be changed basically. So reshape can be done here with 4 cross 2. It can be done. 4 rows and 2 columns. Right? Can you reshape as 2? 1 cross 8. Hmm. See? <coughs> 1 row 8 columns. Hmm. Eight cross one dimensions would be same. Two dimensions would be remain two dimension. See, two brackets would be there. Whatever you do. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. All right. Next. So these were the basics. Now ah, moving on. Now. Now coming to the different types, right? Now in arrays, we have ranges and ranges in arrays are defined using a range. If I give you a range. Alright, so it performs the same function of your range as you do in ranges, it performs the same thing in the array, range. Array is range basically, it's array. If I say np dot arrange of some numbers, very simple, just a has been added, nothing else. The rest of the things are very easy and simple. Okay. So if I say range of from 0 to 20 intervals of 2 so 2 4 6 8 5 and play very simple okay very simple and the most easiest like if i say a4 equals to np dot an range of numbers 50 numbers a4 something looks like this <coughs> 0 to 49 intervals are being done easy a5 if I say a4 dot reshape 50 are there 50 could be done in 10 cross 5 see a4 was an array which could be reshaped into your 10 cross 5 okay that's it fine now when we create arrays guys right 
when we learnt arrays in 12th and in matrix. So there were some um, of the very basic things that like uh, null array, zero array, uh, singleton array, right, one array, one array, zero array, null array, empty array, what we called as right. So empty arrays, null arrays are something different, empty array is something different, right. So let's go with the empty. So what empty does here, it creates an array, right, but you define only the shapes, okay, only the shapes we define there. So it creates the arrays, but have the values as uninitialized. We don't know the values. Whatever the values are going to come, we don't know. So that's it. So if I write a6 is equals to np dot an array, and I give it to be like a uh, four cross four, that is four rows and four columns, and define the data type to be uh, np dot float 32 bits and if I look up to the a6 it looks something like this 4 cross 4 oh sorry I created an array it should be empty and it should be like this yeah so 1 2 3 4 values and again 4 values with this and let's run this again uh, let's, let's take integer so some values you can find in there Now these values I have not given even, I have only given <coughs> 4 rows, 4 columns, that is being made, 4 rows, 4 columns, so you get some uninitialized values, not provided by me, or the system, ah, sorry, system has provided, okay, so this is empty, and if you want to give, uh, go through the documentations, you can go with np.info, oh sorry, this is info and np dot empty then you can run this you can get a new array of given shape without initializing any entries the parameters are there shapes types and orders and then a lot of things are there some examples are there and we can make it okay so all the uninitialized values only will be given okay next next we have uh, zero you know right how the zero matrix looks everything has 0 0 0 hmm? 0 I hope is very clear <coughs> say a7 I make np dot 0 is matrix zeros let's say 2 cross 2 2 rows 2 columns this is your 0 2 rows 2 columns by default as float you need to change it by default, you will be getting it in float results. So, we need to change. <coughs> oh, someone is saying something. Uh, let me see. Voice is lagging. Everyone is facing this problem. <coughs> How many are facing voice lagging problems? Could you please rejoin? I think might be some net problems, network issues. Siddharth's voice not audible. Okay. Uh, one is fine. Two are not fine. What about the rest? Is it uh, fine with everyone or? Two, three are having problems. <coughs> it's fine, right? That's what I think. From my side, I think I'm speaking clearly. Okay, fine. So, for uh, those having not clearly the voice, no sound, uh, you rejoin, please. Okay. Once rejoin, we will be getting it. Okay. Alright, so um, NP dot zeros, you have got like two cross two. Now, uh, with the zeros, it's very clear, right? So, if I make it again in the zero side, I'm changing the data type, right? So, a8 equals np dot zeros of uh, 10 dot 
reshape to uh, 5 cross 2 <coughs> and uh, you can mention the data types right like uh, zeros inside this as uh, t type equals to mv dot an integer of let's say 8 bits 16 bits and when this so a8 would be giving you this 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and like this, right? So, integer of 16 bits. And uh, the convertitions, what we are doing here, like reshaping them, D types, and then writing the things, this can be done using S type. You know, like what S type does, it just converts your data types to another data type. Very simple. Like, if I say print an np dot zeros of 10 numbers where I do a reshape of 2 cross 5 and I need to change this so I write as type of uh, integer because I know I would be getting results in the float so I need to change in integer I write this I need to change in boolean Boolean. <coughs> okay, none type is there. <coughs> Sorry. So, everything would be in false, right? Because completely things are in zero. Similarly, it goes with the ones. Okay, so in the ones to create np dot ones and then like two cross five, five two rows, five columns, and it's similar. I'm not going to make, uh, write it again, right? So it's simple like this. So it can be done same thing as the zeros we have done, right? Then there's something called as identity matrix. These are very clear, I think, right? So next we have identity matrix. So identity matrix are basically your I here in the number what we call as I matrix. Okay. So we'll be writing as E Y E. <coughs> if I say five, so it would be a five cross five that is five rows five columns and in the uh, diagonal side you'll be getting the things as of you know like the ones over there okay so there you'll be getting these things right. uh, moving on if you say two three it would be greater basically three would be fine so you can understand right now right once you'll be having in the diagonals two would be having in the diagonals how i'm identity matrix looks like right so you can go with zero of zero and a lot of things are there numpy exercises i'm going to give you where you can find your solutions right a lot of things will be there. Okay. now here a random works a very important part in numpy really if i'm to see uh i hope it would be there like a very simple program making Let's say 
this is your z okay so is there any occurrence of some uh, alternative or any of the sorting if we do any duplications if we need to go through a duplications 106 is there duplicated same problem three times right but at which places only 6 so original places are not defined only the first beginning place is being uh, shown to you that's the one that i i function gives the identity <laughs> matrix of given order uh, order like in the parenthesis whatever you write like uh, what i have written here in the i is 2 so two rows two columns there you go with only one of the number and if you write 5 5 rows five columns and then in the orders like it will be five different one uh, sorry five one in a uh, diagonal okay like that yeah someone was asking something yes sir uh, here we can check also the length J is equal to length into one zero six. One zero six. J is under sum. What are you saying? So previous we check the length of the string. So I can check of the length of the Z. Z Z is the length. Like uh, J dot length. Z dot uh, like length. Like J dot index. Uh, from where this is spinning right now, the length. Something like this. You have length to work over there because it's a list. Anything else you want to ask? <coughs> okay. Uh, another thing, sir. Uh, when we we use the the empty matrix, there are some value minus nine zero something. So what was that? Where where? Uh, when you use the empty empty uh, list, there are the some values occur uh, like minus nine zero point nine something like that. Okay. So you what are was that? See. If I create an empty list, one 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 I am I am getting. If I get k at three cross three, oh sorry. You are saying about this. I cannot interpret the data as. Oops. Like this. See, empty list. I am getting an identity matrix. This you are saying, right? So what empty was there? Empty can give you any uninitialized values, not defined. Because I cannot define some values in the identity. Sorry, empty. In the identity matrix, you can define. Now here you are getting three cross three identity matrix. See, you can get anything. See, in the previous what we are getting here somewhere here empty. I think no. See, four cross four. These things. Yes. Right. So these are some uninitialized values. See, in the in the definitions, what is it? It returns a new array of a given shape and the data type. What we write, right? Without initializing any entries, we are not going to write any things. Right? System would be generating some numbers on the basis of their shapes and the data types what we have given, and then you will be getting some values. That's it. That is how it goes. It's a charge. Okay, sir. So, sir, it's uh, on uh, starting from the zero. Mm-hmm. No, it is not like that. It always starts from zero. It can start from anywhere. Okay. It can it can start from even exponential values based on the data types we are providing. It would be otherwise it would be very same. Okay. 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 Ok
Okay. <coughs> oh. Alright. Uh, where was I? In the empty now. Sir, uh, empty will always give an identity matrix. No, no, no. See, uh, see what happened there. Uh, just a minute. Let me come down. See, it is not an identity matrix now. Right? So you can get okay, any, any values. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so where was I? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here. So we got three uh, one zero six over there, right? But the index were not given. So for those things, there we have something called as a function called as where. Okay, where. Now, if I say this where function, so if I say z is equals to, <coughs> sorry, mm, s, 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 s is equals to np dot and array of a z, mm, this will be fine, oh, someone is coming right now, oh, who is there? Equal coming, coming. Okay, so s is equals to an array right now. Now 106 is there again for three times. Hmm? Sorted once is there. Now, so shuffling can be also done. np dot shuffle the s values. Hmm, what happened? Why did it come there? Just a minute. So, sir, uh, you use Z to convert it into a uh, numpy array? Mm -hmm. Z is there or S? What I have written? S. The Z, uh, you Z used uh, Z as a uh, parameter, right? So, and you put the values of Z in S uh, using numpy array, right? Yeah. yeah so, sir, uh, Z was not a numpy array at the earlier point where you computed the value of z so now it has been converted into a numpy array shuffling s h What was it doing? Numpy has no attribute of shuffle. Numpy, Numpy has, Numpy has no attribute of shuffle. So, do this have? Let it open. Yeah. Okay. Done. All right. So, S has been shuffled. I hope uh, because that comes in the uh, random module. I forgot that. So random has got the module of shufflings. Okay. So like if you are generating codes, you can use generator of this shuffle to get your codes. So S has got some shuffled right now. So I need to check where this S values are equals to 106. Like 0, 22, and 24. Three different positions index values so s of 0 s of 22 s of 24 so get the values 1 6 1 6 1 6 106 sorry. clear everyone hmm? 
so here <coughs> no matter how many times your data are being given you would be getting the exact locations of your data okay so in pandas it would be very much useful when you're going through codes you'll be shuffling something uh, the values the passwords okay so you'll be creating passwords using some shuffles one 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 from one of them and they can combine all these strings to make a password that is a different thing you try to make some passwords like uh, whenever you make uh, like let's say you forgot your facebook password so when you click on the link and when you start creating your new password it gives you an option generate a new password by clicking on the uh, pop-up kind of thing it gives you right so if you click on there it automatically write some passwords that is basically like a lot of big encrypted password which you will be all, all, obviously you will be forgetting those things right so that's why we write our own things so that are being created using this shuffles taking some alphabets as shuffled some numbers some uh, caps and some small letters like that so try to create those things easy those are easy and beginning some of the functions you'll be <coughs> understanding it better okay all right so this is where function very important okay now with this where there is a function called as unique okay unique now how unique works let's say the s is having an array right if i say a b and c this equals to np dot unique of this s and i need to return the counts equals to true if there are unique then how many are there and i need to return the index values true so a stands for the unique elements and if you see the a dot size you have 22 if you see s dot size you have 25 so why it is 22 and 25 because only <coughs> i hope 106 was common right so 106 are for three times so that is why you have a difference over there right. okay so understood right so if i see the a you get the number oh, sorry a has been printed if i see the b so if i 11 7 1 12 3 9 0 16 these are the index values of the unique numbers and what is c okay we have lots of them so c has got something where original size has got to one and one so Two from here and three, one from there. Yeah, okay, fine. So the uh, C has got some uh, countings one, 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 and two, or three, whatever you are getting over there. So that gives you that at some position, if you find np dot where, so how many digits has got repeated? So where the uh, values of C is greater than one, so it says in the positions of six and nineteen. So what is there in the position of C of six and in the position of C of nineteen? So I get three and two. So if C of 6 is 3, then what is there in the B of 6? So it's 0. No, sorry. B of 3. Just a minute. 12. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So C of 6 is giving you 3. That means that here in the 6th position of the C, there is something which has been printed for six, uh, 3 times. So what is A of the 6? It is 106. So 106 is uh, printed for three times. So what do you have seen now? Now 19 is there. So what is A of this 19? It's 272. Now you can easily see like where this A has, sorry, uh, this S has got uh, 272. So 14 and 19 are the position where this A has got 272. So with this, you can find the codes, right? So this is very much useful when you create codes, as I said, right? So if I say now for your the last thing, what we are doing right now is 
Now let's say this is h which is equals to a blank list and if I say for i in and np dot so your task is to go through and see how many duplications are there here right now after the class you can go with this anyway. so if i make it still like this then oh, one like is fine uh, h okay uh, d would be np dot random dot uh, random of and h dot append of g plus b str of d and finally h would be np dot n array of h which would be reshaped into chorus uh, colors rows and columns okay. so one two three four five one two three four and Okay, all these rows and uh, five columns. Let's run this. Uh, let's wait. Done. Okay. So if we look onto H, these are codes, Google codes, generated. How many? One lakh. One lakh codes has been generated. So with a very glimpse of pandas, I'm giving you right now. A lot of things are left in the numpy right now. So I would be giving it as D F as P D dot a data frame, and would be taking it as data as your h sorry as your h and df dot some sample of your data would be given as the four samples so so these are the codes what we have generated google codes see a lot of codes we have generated within some couples of lines some three four five 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 lines right so it's very easy okay now so this can be converted in html csv so i will download this in csv format and i will show you how it comes if i say df2 underscore csv then i say some codes dot uh, csv run this come to your drive share this tab and you see some codes dot csv and some samples of csv are also there like <coughs> codes of CSV and you can find up your codes. So what you can do is you can even download this using this download. After the class, I'll show you how it looks like. Okay. Okay. Now uh, let me come back. So where it is, where it is untitled. Here, here this time. So you can also make this so <coughs> in the HTML format in the JSON file, whatever you want. So I'll say code start HTML from this. Come back to your uh, this one. Here you can find the code start HTML, and you can come here and you can see now some HTML file would be there in front of you in some wet moments. Two point seven nine MB wait. Um, I'll re reopen it. <coughs> it is taking time, so uh, you can go with this one. <coughs> uh, where it is, where it is, where it is. So you can see it, right? So you're having codes. If I zoom in there. So what do you see? Codes. How many? Uh, let me zoom out. So how many codes you have generated? Oh, so we're on a blank list. So I'm coming to the last of my page. I'll find something over there. So how many codes? Nine, 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 nine. That is ten thousand here. Multiplied by ten rows, one lakh. Clear. So a lot of things can be done here with this oh, numpy, right? Now your work is. I'll share this in your drive, right? So your work will be to identify how many duplicate Google codes are there, right? 
so you will be identifying it today with the where function okay now let me stop your recordings uh, let me write this it's day 40 12 really pretty okay done so, so I'll update this in your drive okay in some 15 minutes 10 to 15 minutes it will be updated in the drive and um, you can download the things from there and <clears throat> then you can start up working with the things all right guys okay so tomorrow we'll be meeting at the same time okay any doubts in Nambi? Sir, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Sir, uh, we have found this. The this. There is. Someone was saying. Yes, sir. Uh, we are uh, our task is to find out the uh, duplicate Google code. Yeah, like uh, the you are the, the first one what we did we created a very small numbers. Let's try the sorry arrays of numbers, and then we created the uh, we found the index values where exactly those have been duplicated, right? In the same manner, so, you have to find the index values where the codes are being duplicated, then which positions. Okay. Okay. That, that's the thing. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I have updated the senior drive. We can go and check it out. All right, guys. Bye bye. Good night. Uh, yep. Repeated codes.